Okay, so let's go ahead and see if you have the math skills to figure out this interesting geometry word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. What is the exact area of a ring that is two inches wide and has an inside diameter of one and one fourth inches? Now, some of you might be saying, why do I have this word right here uh, all capitalized, this word exact? Well, this has a very specific mathematical meaning. Of course, I'm going to explain this in the solution, but I want to give you a full opportunity to solve this problem. Matter of fact, this problem does not even require a calculator. All right, so if you have your answer ready, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct solution uh, in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to fully explain all aspects of this problem. This is not that difficult. But uh, before I get started, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning mathematics as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe button, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so before I show you the answer, just in case there's any confusion, we're talking about a situation where there is a ring, right? So basically, it's a situation like this. This is a ring, or maybe like a washer, however you want to visually think about it. But we're trying to find the area, and more precisely, the exact area of this ring with uh, this given uh, dimensions. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is the following. 39 over 64 pi inches squared. That is the exact area. All right, now, if you didn't get this uh, correct, then this is a great uh, video for you because you need to understand this word exact, especially when we're talking about uh, area proms or volume proms, anything that involves pi, okay? This is a real uh, kind of um, specific key thing because there's a lot of questions on uh, various math exams and quizzes and whatnot that use uh, this word exact, okay? And of course, there is a precise meaning to that word, and I'll get to that in just one second. But uh, if you got this right, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a professional certified expert in calculating the exact area of a circle, okay? Because that's really what this problem is about. And let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. Okay, so here is this uh, problem. And obviously with any math word problem, you wanna read it at least three times. That's my best suggestion to you. In other words, read it, read it again, make sure you understand what's being asked. And you know, you really wanna come up with uh, a good visual model if possible, okay? Because if you can visualize uh, the information in the problem, then you can see the solution as well. Okay, so we'll just kind of hold off here on this word exact for right now. What we want to do is kind of sketch out a ring, right, that is two inches wide and has an inside diameter of one and one fourth inches. So we can kind of see this area that we're talking about. So it's, you know, obviously it's going to be a good idea to draw yourself two circles so we can construct a ring. All right, so this ring here is two inches wide, i.e., the diameter of the big circle is two inches and it has an inside diameter of one and one fourth inches. So this part right here is the area. This is what we're trying to calculate. And uh, more, uh, most um, precisely here, we want to have the exact area, not just an approximation, but the exact area. Now we saw the answer, but I'll explain that answer uh, a little bit more in just one second, but first, we need a strategy to find the area of this ring. How can we find the area of this ring? Well, we have to think about this, but this is not that difficult. What we can do is say, all right, if I'm trying to find the area of this part, okay, I have two circles, right? I have a big circle, this thing right here, and I have a small uh, circle right here, right? So this thing right here and a bigger circle there. So if you think about it, we can find the area of this ring if we can find the area of this uh, big circle and then we know the area of the smaller circle we just kind of subtract out 
actually, let me go ahead and fix this here. If we can subtract away the area of this small circle uh, from the big circle, we're going to be left, right? So basically, think about if we had a piece of wood, this, um, uh, this big circle right here was made out of wood, and then we just kind of cut this thing out of it right here, right? We just went and cut this thing out and took away the area of the small circle. What would remain is that uh, ring, and that uh, is basically the way we're going to calculate the ring area. Okay, so if you understood this in terms of the strategy, oh, well then, you know, you're almost there, okay, because this is not that difficult, but we do need to understand what the formula is to find the area of a circle. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared, okay? So here, if we wanted to find the area of this circle, it's gonna be equal to pi r squared r, being the radius of a circle. Okay, so just to be clear on what the radius is, it goes, for, it emanates from the center of the circle uh, and it goes out, all the way out to the edge of the circle. Okay, now the radius is also one half of the diameter and the diameter is effectively the width of the circle. So that's the diameter. One half of the diameter is the radius. Okay, so again, uh, the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. And what is pi? Well, pi, uh, most people um, uh, are familiar with pi as the number pi, okay, or an, approxim an approximation of pi, which in that uh, decimal is approximately 3.14, okay? But what is pi? Well, uh, pi itself, okay, we really can't write out all the decimals of pi. That is a problem because this goes on to infinity, okay? And it's a, what we call an irrational number. The digits, okay, do not repeat and they do not stop. So to get all the digits, uh, all the decimal digits of pi, we would have to like, you know, spend our entire lifetime and then some to write all, we don't have that kind of time. So we just use this symbol to say, all right, this symbol right here is gonna represent all these infinite uh, digits. So. Uh, just to be clear in mathematics, if you have something like 7.25, okay, this is a terminating decimal. So these type of numbers like this can be expressed as fractions, and these numbers are called uh, rational numbers. Now, if you have a, um, a something that repeats, a decimal like 7.333 and just keeps going, all these threes repeat, uh, this is a repeating decimal situation, and these uh, problems like this can also be expressed as fractions. But when you have a situation where a decimal does not repeat, so let's say at 7.12394518, and you're not getting any repeating decimals, and this is just going to go on and on and on, well, this is the situation we have with pi. Okay, so it's an irrational number, and I want you to keep that in mind because... Uh, we're not going to be able to use an estimate of pi because that will throw off our answer. In other words, if we use an estimate of pi, we will have an approximation for the area. So in mathematics, especially geometry, when you have when you want an exact answer of area or volume, something that involves uh, generally, you know, anything, uh, any formulas that uh, involve pi, like circles or cylinders or sphere, you just leave the pi all by itself, okay? You don't uh, use a decimal approximation. So that's an explanation of why we have pi uh, in the final answer. So again, anytime you want an exact uh, anything, again, area, volume, uh, whatever the case might be, and you never take pi and use a decimal approximation for it. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the next step, which of course is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I wouldn't ask if it wasn't that important, and it's important for me, yes indeed, but it's also important for other people that are interested in mathematics or who needs or who needs really, you know, help, a lot of help in math, okay? Now, um, what I have found is that most people who struggle in math uh, you know, are struggling because of, you know, one, they have a lot of anxiety towards math, and they they have this anxiety because they're not getting adequate in, uh, instruction, unfortunately. And it's tough to learn in a school setting. Uh, you know, here is one teacher, and you got all these students. You're not getting kind of an individualized care. You come you come in at you know uh, a particular time. You know, and one hour later, you're out the door. 
that's a tough kind of environment to get everything you need. So for me, what I like to do is to be able to break things down nice and slowly, try to teach in clear and understandable ways for those, for those people who need to really learn math. Okay, the worst thing that I've seen uh, you know, when it comes to education is people giving up on themselves, whether is you know, when they have the full potential to master mathematics. But anyways, by you subscribing, it really does allow me to reach a lot more people. So thank you so much. And if you are going to subscribe, make sure to hit that notification bell so you can get my latest videos as well. Okay, so back to the problem. All right, so we have a strategy. We know what we need to do to find the exact area. We know what this word means, exact now. Okay, it means that we're not going to take our pi calculations and, and have some sort of decimal approximation. So all we're going to be doing is working with pi. Okay, so we have to basically uh, find the area of two circles and then subtract uh, the small circle uh, away from the area of the small circle away from the big circle and uh, uh, we'll have the exact area so let's go ahead and actually do these do these calculations so that uh, before we do these calculations we've got to make sure we have the correct information so we were told that the big circle okay of this ring or the width of this ring uh, it is two inches wide okay and of course that means that its diameter is two inches but we need the radius for um, our calculations for area. So we have to take one half of the radius, I'm sorry, one half the diameter, which of course is the radius. So that radius here will be one inch. Okay, so the inside diameter, the small circle, uh, it's inside the, well, the promise to the inside diameter was one and one fourth inch, right? So that was the diameter of the small circle. So we're gonna have to apply our knowledge of fractions here to kind of get the radius. And this is not that difficult. So here we have a uh, mixed number fraction, one and one fourth. So four times one is four, plus one is five fourths. So if I want to uh, uh, get one half of the diameter, which of course is the radius, I need to take this one and one fourth, or this five fourths, right? And then I'll just multiply it by one half, which is effectively dividing by two, okay? So uh, that will give me the radius. And of course, right here, we're going to just multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So we're going to get uh, five over eight inches. Okay, so remember the units of measure here are in inches. So now I have um, the radius of the big circle and the radius of the small circle. So now let's go ahead and plug all this stuff into um, the formula for the area of a circle. Okay, so let's start with the uh, big circle over here because it's super easy. So the area is equal to pi r squared. What is the radius? Well, one inch, so we'll plug that in for r. So this is just gonna be uh, pi times one squared. One squared is, of course, one. So the area of the big circle is, uh, basically doesn't get any uh, easier than this, one pi inches squared. Okay, so remember, area is units of measure, uh, units of measure squared. So that's not a trivial detail. We are working in inches, so we make sure we put in inches squared. Okay, so now over here, a small circle, well, this is going to be a, like an extra bonus because we get to work with fractions. I know that's just really exciting for everybody. So let's go ahead and plug in the radius here, which is, of course, 5 eighths. And again, this problem, um, you know, this would be a type of problem that uh, math teachers love to give, and, and, and the directions are no calculators because they want you... Uh, to see, and they want to see if you have the, you know, the basic arithmetic skills to work, you know, this out. And, you know, you don't need a calculator because we're not going to be multiplying anything with pi. Okay. All right. So in other words, or decimal approximation of pi. All right. So the radius is five eighths. We're going to square that. Remember two square first. Remember the order of operations. We do powers before multiplication. So five eighths squared is what? Five eighths, five eighths times five eighths which of course will be 25 over 64. So uh, the area here is gonna be 25 over 64 pi inches squared. Okay, so here is the small circle. This is the big circle. So now we have to find the difference, right? We have to take away the area of the small circle from the big circle. So that'll be the area of the ring, okay? And as long as we leave these pi's intact and we don't replace them with a decimal approximation, we will have the exact area of the ring. So now we need to go ahead and clean this up. So we have one pi minus 25 over 64 pi inches squared. So let's go ahead and clean this up right now. So again, 
we get to work with fractions, so just so much fun here. So one pi is the same thing as 64 of 64 pi. Okay, now we need that 64 because we need to subtract these fractions right here, and 64 is the denominator, so we need the lowest common denominator, which of course is 64. So just to be clear here, I know this may be confusing for some of you, if I have five pi and I subtract away three pi, what is that? Well, that is two pi, okay? So, you know, you kind of almost think of this as a variable. Now, if you really need to kind of see this in another kind of light because you're confused with what I'm doing here, you could factor out this um, pi, okay, as the greatest common factor. So this would be five minus three, which of course is the same thing as two pi, okay? So when you have pi in these calculations like this, you can, uh, you know, think of these numbers as just the coefficients, right? So in other words, if you had like 3x minus 7x, you're basically subtracting the coefficients and x just, you know, uh, these are like terms. Same kind of idea with working with pi. But again, pi is an actual value. So I just wanted to clarify that just in case anyone was confused. Okay, so basically all we need to do here is figure out what 1 minus uh, 25 over 64 Again, LCD is 64, so 64 over 64 minus 25 over 64. So now we could just go ahead and subtract the respective numerators. So 64 minus 25, of course, will be 39 over 64 pi inches squared. Okay, now this is as simple as we can get it. We cannot reduce this fraction. So this would be the exact ring area. Now at this point, if you wanted to actually have some sort of uh, sense of uh, what the um, area of that ring is, well, you could find a decimal approximation, okay? And then the way you would do that is, of course, replace this pi with uh, various um, uh, approximations of, you know, various decimals, okay? So you could start off with 3.14, um, or you can use more digits of pi. Now, the more digits of pi that you use in your approximation, the more accurate uh, your ring area will be, okay? But again, it will not be that, you know, even if you use 10,000 digits of pi, you will not have the exact precise answer. You'll just have a super, super good approximation. And when you are finding the approximation of area or volume where pi is involved, okay, you need to change your, um, your final answer to this symbol, okay? This right here means exactly, this right here in mathematics means approximately, right? Okay, so hopefully this was uh, revealing for some of you, but like, wow, okay, interesting. You know, the whole idea is for me to teach you something new just in case you haven't seen this. But if you do plan on uh, studying uh, geometry, and, uh, this is, uh, I would say, pretty basic geometry, but especially if you are some sort of math student, then you got to understand these small little uh, details, okay, because this will come up on plenty of exams. Now, if you do want to learn more geometry, uh, let me give you a couple suggestions. For those of you that want to learn like basic geometry, I have a ton of uh, videos on my YouTube channel, uh, but I would suggest checking out like my pre-algebra course. You can find a link to that in the description below. I have a few chapters on basic um, uh, surface area, volume, you know, uh, basic level geometry, which I think is practical geometry. But for those of you that really want to get into like full on geometry, what we call Euclidean geometry, check out my full geometry course. Again, you'll find the link to it in the description below. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.